we have a vector field with components x, y, and z. S is the part of the cone, z equals the square root of x squared plus y squared between the planes z equals 1 and z equals 4, downward orientation. And I'm guessing we want to, I didn't read the instructions, <laughs> oh, evaluate the, the flux integral. What a big surprise. Okay, so the flux integral, huh. Here's what sticks with you. Um, kind of big generalities stick with you when you haven't when you're a professor or anybody and and everybody gets rusty at this stuff. So what you've got to depend on is okay, maybe you don't remember the formula. You guys should for the test, right? But uh, and and I remember the formula because I've taught it a million times. But even if you don't remember the formula, you can look it up and then let the formula be your guide. I really want to I really want to bring that home. Let the formula be the steps, be your recipe for computing this stuff. The generic formula for a flux integral looks like this. The flux integral, it, it is a type of surface integral, isn't it? Um, and the generic formula looks like this. Uh, surface integral f dot n ds. But then the really important formula to remember is the calculation formula, right? So the calculation formula, we end up integrating over, usually we change it we, because we project S usually down in the XY plane, and we in integrate rectangularly, if I can pronounce that, um, uh, over a region R, which is kind of the shadow of S in the XY plane usually. And then the N that we need, well, the normal vector that we end up needing, it's not N anymore. In the calculation formula, it's, plus or minus del g. And del g itself, da, del g itself is not a unit normal vector, but when you multiply that n, that unit normal vector, times ds, you get some cancellation with the square root from, from uh, uh, the magnitude of del g, and, and you get that nice calculation formula. So that's what you grab a hold of. If you don't remember it in six months and you're taking a different class and you have to evaluate this, then you look it up and then you, you let the formula tell you what to do. So you look inside, you look at the integrand. What is this formula telling us to find? Uh, G, and then what are we going to do to G? Del it. <laughs> in other words, take the gradient. That's what del G is, right? And then we have to decide, oh, are we going to take the minus one or the plus one? Well, we want it to point down generally, right? It's probably going to be the minus one, right? Depending on how you create G in the first place. So uh, let me kind of do that off to the side. So the surface is related to what we call G, right? This uh, surface between the horizontal plane Z equals 1 and Z equals 4 is what we're integrating over, right? Um, do you really need to draw that? I, I could draw a quick picture. I, I know what the top half of a cone looks like, right? This pointy end would be where? Origin. The origin. I'm not going to coordinate it other than to mention that. And then z equals 1, if you cut this surface, this cone with z equals 1, then you're going to cut it maybe here, and you'll get that sort of cross section at, at z equals 1, and at z equals 4, maybe up here somewhere. So you don't, you don't have to have a, a great picture in 3D. This one's fairly easy to even imagine in your head if you know what, what the cone looks like or if you know this is the equation of a cone. So it's, it, we're integrating over that, that circular, well, that fr it's really a frustrum, isn't it, that surface? A frustrum is like a lampshade, if you think about it. It's part of a cone. So that, that part in green and front and in back and around, right? So that's the surface. I, I suppose you could get away without even drawing that, but it, it, that's going to be helpful to determine, though, R, what, what R should look like. So it's not a bad idea to draw it. Anyway, um, G then, how do, we, how do we get G? Well, the normal procedure is to go ahead and, and get everything on one side of the equation. Uh, so I'll subtract the square root of x squared plus y squared, get it equal to 0. And then normally this is, we keep z positive, and normally this is what we call uppercase G, right? G of x, y, z. And then del G, 
the idea is del G is going to be, if we think of this, this equation in green as, as a level surface of G of X, Y, Z, del G will be normal to that level surface. So that's the reason. So what is del G going to be? I might need a little more room here. Well, del G, okay, we need to take the derivative with respect to x for the first component, right? What is that going to be? Let's just do a little scratch work here. What's uh, the derivative of g with respect to x? So g subscript x. That's going to be your first component, right? So negative 1 half quantity x squared plus y squared to the negative 1 half times 2x. Okay, so clean that up a little bit. What's, what's left on top? Negative, well, negative x, right? Over just the square root. I think that's all the scratch work we need because y, the, the derivative with respect to y is going to be very similar, right? So we'll need a little more room here. Um, I if you want, we, you know, I think a lot of students prefer the component form, so if you want, we can use that. I don't care. Uh, so I'm going to make the first component negative x over the square root of x squared plus y squared. So th then by symmetry, what would the second component be if you take the derivative with respect to y? Negative y instead of negative x on top. And then uh, for the third component, what would that be? Just one, the derivative of, of, of G, capital G, with respect to Z would be one. <coughs> N and, and what's the problem with this normal vector? Which way does it point? In, in, in terms of up or down, generally, which way does it point? It doesn't point directly up or directly down, but generally it points up because the, the K component is positive, right? So the idea then in this formula uh, over here, this is the, the particular instance where we would take negative del g. Now, you could avoid that altogether if you had just brought the z to the other side and called that g, and then you take del g, and that's, that's the one you would use, right? So there's some options there. But if you, you want to stick with the same thing every time and, and keep z positive, then that's, that's how you do it. You take the opposite of del g in the formula. Okay, so then over here, uh, We'll go ahead and compute the integrand, and I won't uh, I won't uh, substitute in for z yet. I'll just I'll just put every I'll, I'll worry about I'll worry about the z later. Um, so let's just take that dot product f dot negative del g, and it wouldn't be a bad idea to so you don't make a mistake to go ahead and do that, right? Yes. Uh, because it told me to, downward orientation. Right. So, I mean, if you think about the normal vectors pointing outward in this picture I drew, really we're, we're saying, hey, take the, I don't know if you can see that very well, we're saying take the normal vectors that point outward because these ones are the downward one. If you went on the inside, on the opposite side, that would be the one pointing up. All right. So there's two choices. Anytime you, anytime you orient a service, there's two choices. Um, and it related to, to del G, I mean, when you orient a surface, you actually use a unit normal vector, but uh, which is what we're referring to here. But things cancel, and, and when you consider del G, or if you want it to be the unit normal vector, del G divided by magnitude of del G, then you're either going to take del G divided by magnitude of del G, and that would be basically the way I've created it here, the vector pointing generally upward, or you can orient your surface by taking the opposite of that, and that's, that's what we did here, right? Because it told us to. We wanted, and again, it told us to take the downward pointing one, which is equivalent to the outward pointing one for this particular surface. Does that make sense? Okay, but that's how I knew. So I just took the opposite of everything in del G. Now let's take that dot product, and you know, I, I, I gotta say, it's probably a good idea to actually write write these guys right next to each other. So in component form, f, the vector field is x, y, z, and then you just found out that negative del g is x over the square root of uh, x squared plus y squared, comma, 
y over the square root of x squared plus y squared, comma, uh, negative 1. So if you take this dot product, what do you end up with? So you end up with x squared over square root of x squared plus y squared. And then it's a dot product, so the answer should be a scalar, right? So plus, so we take that guy times that guy, add it to that guy times that guy, so that's going to be a y squared over square root of x squared plus y squared, right? And then plus what, or minus? Minus c. Yes. Yep. Yep. And in fact, we have to do it now since we, have, we didn't do it before. Now, think about it. When we integrate a, it, what essentially becomes a double integral, we can't have three variables. So we have an x, we have a y, and we have a z. We can't have three variables in it, right? And since we're integrating we're, uh, in, in kind of the, the usual fashion, we're going to replace z with what it equals in terms of x and y, which is easy enough, right? That's given by the equation for s. So, all right, let's see what that does. Keep that in sight. Okay, so we're going to plug in, for z, we're going to plug in the square root of x squared plus y squared. So we get x squared over the square root of x squared plus y squared plus y squared over the square root of x squared plus y squared plus, or actually minus, uh, square root of x squared plus y squared. And it looks horrible, but maybe if we add things together, it won't look so bad, right? Any questions so far? Any other questions? All right, so this is our integrand. We're calculating our integrand. That's usually the hardest part. So uh, we've got common denominators here. I could just add these first two together, right? We have that. Oh, and then how do we combine it with this guy, or should we try to combine it with this guy? I think we probably should, because what's going to happen when we get a common denominator here, multiply numerator and denominator by that common square root of x squared plus y squared? What are we going to get on top? So quantity x squared plus y squared, right? I, I really don't need parentheses there. I put them in anyway, because I have the division bar acting as a grouping symbol. So imagine multiplying this guy by the common denominator here, numerator and denominator on top, you get x squared, the square root goes away, you get x squared plus y squared on the bottom, you get square root of x squared plus y squared. And what happens? It all zeroes out? That's kind of disappointing, isn't it? Yeah. So do we have to uh, work on setting up an integral? No. Sometimes you get zero as an answer, right? So, I mean, is it clear then uh, if the integrand is zero, do I, do I really care about r and dA? No, it's going to equal zero. So you're, to, to have a complete statement here, then the, the flux integral, f dot n ds, since we got an integrand of zero, the value of the flux integral is going to be zero.